Hi there guys and welcome back to the channel. In today's video I'm going to be making candles. So I'm going to show you the full process of how, how I go about making my candles. Um, I've just got now in my new jars, this is the jars I'm going to be releasing my, uh, my actual candles in when I release my candles. That will be in the next two weeks really. But I want to try this new wax. I'm experimenting with different waxes still, different blends. Always ever trying to improve the performance of my candles. So I'm still testing different waxes but this is a wax I haven't used before so I'm excited to experiment with this one it's an ecosystem rapeseed and coconut wax blend and they'll be going into into the new jars these are uh, 30 cl size jars and the wax uh, sorry and the oils I'm going to be using today to do my test candles with is a pumpkin spice fragrance oil and a dragon's blood fragrance oil. Dragon's blood is, is a, an interesting name, but it smells really nice. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, then this is a great opportunity to subscribe now. Please click the red subscribe icon. That will keep you informed of all my upcoming videos in the future. Uh, some of the next videos I'm going to be making are some more candle videos using 100% soy wax and 100% paraffin wax. So I want to compare the two different waxes in a candle. Um, of various properties of how they look and how they perform. So that would be a really good interesting video to uh, to see when that comes out. That will be out probably in a week or two. Um, but yeah, so for now, yeah, please subscribe, please, please like this video and let's get going making these candles. So when I go about making my test candles, I don't fill my candle jars right to the top. I fill them halfway up. Well, what I actually do is I use 100 grams. Whenever I always... Uh, do a test candle, I always use 100 grams of wax. That there is a baseline for me for testing purposes. 100 grams of wax and then I add the fragrance oil to that, whether it be 6%, 7%, 8%, but it's all based off 100 grams of wax. So it fills the container jars of this size roughly up halfway and a little bit more so in the smaller jars, a little bit over halfway. But I always use 100 grams, that's just for testing. I'm not looking to have a finished candle straight away. I just want to test, test the different um, percentages of fragrance oil, test the different fragrance oils, and test different wicks. So as you might have saw in these ones I've shown you, these are wickless, because um, I want to test different wicks. I don't just want to make one candle and have one wick in it, and then that's uh, sort of finished. If I stick, uh, if I glue a wick to the bottom of this jar, then it's a little bit more difficult to take that wick out and put another one in. So I make it wickless and then I push a, a hole down in the middle. I'll show you with this one here has already got a hole. So here's another one I'm testing. You can see a hole now I've pushed down the middle. That's using one of these metal skewers. So it's just a metal skewer that I just push down in there to create a hole really, just, just for the wick. So then I can push a wick in and then I'm testing that wick. If that wick doesn't seem to be performing very well, then I blow out the candle, let it harden, pull the wick out, stick a different type of wick in, then test again. That's just for testing purposes, obviously. Then once I'm happy with uh, the oil and the percentage of oil and the wick type, then I fill the, the glass all the way to the top and do a full test. So yeah, so that's what we're gonna be doing with this wax today. I'm gonna to use 100 grams of it and I'm going to make two candles using it. So I'm going to have 200 grams and then pour 100 grams into each. It's going to be wickless to start with and then I'll add the wick later on once it's hardened. All right, so let's first thing is just measure out 200 grams of this wax. So it comes in, so I've only bought 800 grams of this. I've only bought a small sample size. This is 800 grams container and um, this is how it comes, sort of like an ice cream sort of packaging style and it's just yeah solid thing solid bit of wax so i'll break that off with a knife measure out 100 grams it's not hard to do all right so when you do this be very careful i probably should use a smaller knife but my smaller ones are upstairs and i can't bother to go upstairs so i'm just when you when you, if you get a solid wax don't try and break it in the middle you just want to break off bits around the edge so literally just holding it and just crumbling it around the edge so you see how it cracks so easily they all, they all do that as long as you go to the edge, just break little bits off. And then obviously start filling up your container. So measure out 100 grams of wax. It's no hassle at all really. I know some people don't really like it and they complain about it, but it's not that much harder really to be honest. 
So there you go, I've got a nice few bits there broken off. So what I'll do is, I've got my, my, uh, my empty jug here. That's what I'm gonna measure my wax in. I'm gonna put that on my container. Hopefully you can see that from there. Obviously now it's measuring the, the weight of the, the jug. So I'm gonna tear that down to zero. So now that's measuring a weight of zero. And then I add in my wax until I get to 100 grams. So every time I put a bit in, obviously the weight's going up. So right now, 40 grams already. So 72. That bit might be a bit big, but we'll see. So it's 108 now, so we need to take a little bit out. That's 97, so I'm gonna cut that bit in half. That's 103, so again, cut that bit in half again. Oh, I like to be quite precise, or very precise, when I'm measuring out my ingredients, so I know that everything's the same every time based off 100 grams of wax. So there you go, it's 100 grams, 0.1, so that's fine with me, 0.1, I'll let that go. That's 100 grams of wax weighed out. So obviously I want 200 grams, but that would be if I'm making one candle, how I'd measure out 100 grams. I'm gonna add another 100 grams in now. I'll do that, um, I won't actually, because I'm gonna do this slightly different, I'm gonna measure out one candle at a time. So I'm gonna make one candle at a time. So for this one, because I'm using two different fragrance oils, I will do 100 grams, make one candle, and then I'll do another candle measuring out 100 grams again. Okay, so that's the, that's the wax measured out. I'm gonna put that on the melter and get that melted down. I'm gonna melt this down to, it's about 75 degrees, this is suggested that. So that's what I'm gonna melt that down to now. Okay, so we've got the wax melting down. I'm melting it on a double boiler method. Double boiler is just a, a saucepan full of, with a little bit of water and I put the jug in it. If you haven't seen how that's done, there's many videos out there on a double boiler method, so just search for one of those and you'll see how that is. But that's very simple to do if you're making a small batch. Right, so now I'm gonna measure out my oil. Again, this is gonna be in my container. Put it on the scales, tear the scales down to zero. Right, so now the scales are on zero. Take one of your fragrance oils. The first one I'm gonna make is the pumpkin spice. I'm gonna make that at 8%. So I'm gonna put 8% oil in. Now 8% will be 8% of whatever the amount of uh, wax you're using. So I'm using 100 grams. So uh, one of the reasons why I measure out 100 grams is because it's very quick to work out the percentages of different uh, ingredients if you're adding multiple ingredients. So I'm just gonna add the oil in this case and obviously that's just gonna be 8%. Sorry, 8%, that's gonna be eight grams, which is 8%. So just, uh, these these uh, bottles here are so easy to use. I've got these from uh, Craftivator, and these are just their sample sizes, but they're a squeezy bottle. So you literally just keep squeezing until you get to your, uh, the amount you want. So I want eight grams, we're at seven grams now. And 7.7, .7. again, that's it, so that's 8.1 grams, that would do. That's uh, the, the pumpkin spice, this one. See that there, pumpkin spice. So that's that already measured out. Set that aside now. Get one of my um, my uh, jars, empty jars. Um, if I was gonna put a wick in it at this case, now I would stick the wick in. But obviously I'm doing them wickless for now. So I don't need to do that. So that's now ready to go. I'm gonna wait until my wax is melted and get the two uh, wax and oils mixed together. One other thing to point out, um, I always mark my jars, or label up my jars, I should say, so I have a reference of what I'm testing. Here's an example. So I write all the detail on the label. Um, I don't use a super sticky tape because I find that's really difficult to get off. Sorry, I don't use a super sticky label because I, I find that sort of ruins the, the jar. I first started using them without the elastic band and to trying to get all the, uh, the glue off your jar just spoils the, the jar. So I use these little notepad type ones now. 
they're not the, the best at st sticking on and staying on but just put an elastic band round that's perfect for me because then it, it's easy to take the label off and doesn't ruin the jar so I write all the necessary details on here then there you go you've got your reference for what's in in that jar okay so back with the the melted wax now there's not much in there because it's only 100 grams but that's all liquid now uh, what I've noticed with this wax it's a very low melt point as well it doesn't take too long to, to melt down so we're just going to let that cool down for a minute until it reaches the temperature that I want to add my oil to more my oil at so it's at 74 now I'm going to add my oil about uh, 69 I'm going to add my oil with this one because there's not much wax in there it's the temperature cools down very quickly when you've got this filled up to the top but as there's hardly that much wax in here the temperature falls very quickly so you've got to be careful uh, when you're dealing with small amounts of wax so that's now at 70.8 so I'm going to add my oil now so oil is in my pouring jug here so there's only a small amount of oil, so it's 8%. And stir, stir, stir. I stir for at least 45 seconds. So at this point now, whilst I'm stirring, I heat up my glass jar. So I use a heat gun. I just got on the side here so while I'm stirring I'm going to add some temperature to my jar so it's pre-warmed up so the reason I warm my jar up before adding the wax in is because it uh, helps to eliminate shrinkage if the glass is really cold then it's absorbing the heat out of my wax here very quickly and I don't want that, I want a very 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 slow cool down so that's thoroughly mixed now now I'm just going to pour that straight in put that over there so just pour that in Right, and for that, that is it, for testing purposes anyway. So I'm going to leave that to, to cure now. I'm going to leave it for a minimum of one week, ideally longer, so two weeks. But I'll do an initial burn after one week uh, for a couple of hours, see how that smells then, then put it out and then burn it again uh, another week after that. So now we've got our liquid wax in the liquid form. So again, it's 100 grams of that. Got our oil ready to go in. I'm going to take the temperature. It's at 75 at the minute. Let that cool down. Again, it's only a small amount of wax in there, so that's going to cool down very quickly. So uh, pay attention and keep an eye on it. The more you stir it, the quicker it cools down. temperature again so, uh, 72 now seventy one point seven so that's seventy point six I'm gonna add my oil in that goes in Again, going to warm up the glass. So again, that's the glass warmed up to help eliminate uh, the frosting and the sinkholes. Uh, frosting is less important in coloured glasses but in a clear glass it's 
more important because you can see through the sides. So again now just pour that in, straight in. And that's another test candle done. So again, this is a video of how I go about making my test candles. And yes, I will say it's the test candles. These are obviously not the finished candles. That's how I go about doing my testing. So testing for, uh, this is mainly, I, I do it wickless because I'm the big importance is I'm testing the different types of wicks. If I was to glue a single wick in there, single wick type, whatever it might be, a, um, a V wick, a VLR, a TB wick, CL wick, whatever wick it might be. Once that's glued in there, then that's the only wick you can really test without a lot of messing about to get that wick out. So I do it wickless. Then I can test three or four different types of wick to see if they, how they react with the wax and the oil. If they are flickering too much, then that's I eliminate that wick pretty much straight away. If there's too much soot coming out, too much smoke from the candle. Again, that's another bad wick. I don't want to use it. So I can alternate between my wicks very easily uh, doing this process. Um, so if you've enjoyed this video and liked something, please subscribe to the channel. I've got more videos coming with different types of wax. So that'll be very interesting to see those. And when I and when I make those videos, I will do my um, give my opinion on how this wax performs. And I'll show you some of the after pictures of how this container looks after I've burnt it. So then you get some feedback on how these two test candles came out. And if I found an appropriate wick as well, that'd be good to know as well. So yeah, please support the channel. Please subscribe to the channel and uh, give this video a thumbs up. If you've got any questions or comments, please write in the comments below and I'll answer those in due time. So yeah, thank you very much. See you in the next one, guys.